Welcome to Foundation 1.9.4.9 Full Episode 1 Reboot. So there's a lot of changes. The map generator is now fully customizable and for our surf happiness there are quite a few changes that we need to accommodate so I thought I would redo a perfect start because it has changed. So we have our original maps, uh, coastal fluvial hills, mountain and valley. Uh, however, this fully customized map generator uh, is very, very good. So we can do what we've always probably wanted to do, which is create a fairly flat map, if you like to be able to create a big, big kind of medieval city. Uh, now this is coastal, but we're going to change it to fluvial. I just like river maps. Uh, so here we go, fluvial, and now what we want to do is customize it. So the river is there, that's fine. Uh, let's reduce the amount of lakes. Uh, let's, uh, islands are fine, there's one in the river and one at the bottom and one at the top, that's okay. Uh, let's reduce the amount of cliffs, uh, there we go, and then let's reduce the amount of hills. Uh, so there we go, that is a relatively flat map. Uh, now we'll see how flat it is uh, when we actually generate the map. Uh, so let's go and uh, hit confirm on there, and uh, we'll skip the loading screen. And we'll see what happens. So no mods found, yep, because we're using a clean build. Okay, right, so advice, your first territory. Well, we know, so there's the rocks for our mineral extraction, that's good. Uh, let's see if there's more, I presume there is. Uh, let's have a look around. Yep, there is more there to the side. Okay, so now we pick our territory, and I have picked a territory where there are minerals quite close there to the south. Uh, that we can uh, have a look at. Uh, so village centre, uh, we want to put that over to the left hand side because our berries are there and our rocks are at the top. So we want the village centre to be more on the right hand side. So again, there's all the mineral deposits there quite close by. Uh, so I looked at quite a few of the different uh, possibilities for a starting area and I decided this was my best one. Okay, so we've got our village centre in, organising work, put it into practice. So let's put this advice into practice, and that is build a builder's workshop, uh, which of course is the first thing that we do. Uh, so just leaving it up there for you guys to read if you want to. Uh, but again, builder's workshop, again, you want it kind of in the middle of your plot of land, uh, and then build. Okay, lovely, we've ticked that off. Now track a um, aspiration. You might as well get it done straight away. So I always go with the famous builder, reach prosperity of 500. Uh, you can obviously do it at hard, which means you need to re reach a rating of 50 with every estate. Uh, so that would be uh, labor, uh, the monastery, and uh, the royalty for the army. Uh, but let's just go with uh, that for now a famous builder. Okay, so we need to allocate some serfs. There we go, allocate three. Uh, we can't paint anything at the moment, so uh, that's fine. Uh, again, we need to hit play, of course. Okay, so we've uh, completed the advice, so it should uh, give us the next task. Yes, it has. Okay, so we want a lumber camp. So because our village center is on the left, we want the lumber camp on the right, far away because that red circle uh, destroys uh, desirability uh, for living. So we want to make sure that it's far away from where our living area is gonna be. You wanna put blue circles over your berries and your rocks, same as the original video. Uh, and we are gonna mark an area for cutting down wood. Okay, so that and that is done. That is building, that's fine. Uh, again, building a lumber camp. Okay, yep, yeah, well, we're already doing that, that's fine. Uh, what we want to do now is just speed up the time uh, so we get this uh, completed. So our builders are getting resources delivered and are taking it to the lumber camp to get it built. And then next we're going to uh, need our uh, berry collectors, our uh, stonemason. Um, we're going to need uh, quite a lot of other buildings, but we're going to get everything put down over about the next 30 minutes. Uh, if you do find this content helpful, uh, then do also help me, of course, uh, by subscribing to the channel, but let's carry on. So we need a forester camp and a gathering hut. So let's get the gathering hut for the berries. So build, get rid of that. And we also want to paint reforestation in the same area that we've marked for cutting down wood. There we go. 
Okay, and we want to build a forest camp. So we'll get that next to our lumber camp and get that built as well. So again, it's gonna use a lot of our resources, but not a problem, speed up time. So again, times three, so we get everything done quickly. And what I will also do is skip large sections. So although this episode lasts for 30 minutes, uh, it was well over an hour of gameplay. So just expect that when you're playing to get to the same point by the end of this episode, you will be playing for well over an hour or around an hour. Okay, so our collection hut is now built and our reforestation camp is also built. Uh, so all we need to do now is allocate serfs to both of those buildings. So gathering food, yep, okay, yep, we'll allocate two people to that one. Uh, so they will go and start working. In fact, you can already see the two uh, villagers with the hats on who will go and start uh, getting the berries. Okay, so we've already done our first extraction zone. We don't need help with that. That was the little blue circles over the berries and the rocks. Uh, that we've already done and the thing is I actually accelerate stuff quite a bit in this episode so needs and happiness so okay as for food you first need berries and then we need more uh, because happiness now depends on two food types uh, so we also want a granary to store our food uh, there will be a fairly reasonable location and we also need a stone cutter camp so we'll move it quite far away from the rocks, not too far, because we want to keep that whole left hand side as um, uh, residential, so where our village actually is, and we're going to automatically straight away build a big market as well, uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but again we've now built everything that we need to build, so we have each one of these buildings, uh, we don't need anything else at the moment. You could, if you wanted, build a second gathering uh, post uh, for the berries, but it's not necessary this early in the game. Okay, so there goes our stone cutter, and of course, uh, the reason that we can't finish the granary is because it requires stone, and we don't have any. So, there we go. I've skipped forwards, and the granary has now been built, and we've allocated resources, and we've ticked off our next challenge. Okay, so the next is defining residences, so we want a residential area, so again, this whole left hand side is going to be our residential area, but you want to leave the area around the village square empty, okay, you don't want anything there in the middle, now we can make that bottom bit a bit thicker, there we go, but you want to leave the central area blank, okay, so we need to put in a well as well, so we'll put that in, lovely. And then the next thing that we're going to want to do is put in a market square. Uh, so the market square will be literally on our village centre uh, and we're going to put in five market benches to allocate uh, five different food types. Now later on we will be able to also add merchant um, tables as well for obviously other item types and play around uh, with the central location and layout but the idea of this is to get everything done near the beginning. So again, skip forwards. So there's our zoning, and what we want to do is we want to build a market. So stick the pin up here, and then function, you want market stalls caught, and then you want your market stalls. So zoom in, rotate them around. Okay and we're going to put in, as I said, about five. So there's one, two, lovely, and another one, three, and another one, four, and one more, five, and we've got space on the other edge uh, to put additional benches in as and when we need. And of course we can also rotate um, 180 degrees and put them behind as well. So there we go, that is under construction. Okay, and of course we just need to get that uh, fulfilled so it increases our happiness because our happiness is only currently at 45% uh, because our village is uh, not very well done at the moment, but that is fine. So again, we will skip forwards. Okay, 
and our first market stall has been built so we can assign the resource and add a market trader no we don't currently have anyone so okay we've got two people here so let's get rid of one bring it back up add the trader there we go assign the resource and berries lovely stuff now you'll notice as we go through, I mean the population is 10 at the moment, but it will start going up as I skip the footage forwards, uh, because again, as I've said, I've cut out quite a lot of the in-between stuff. So we're just highlighting when stuff is being built. So there we go. Happiness is already going up, it's at 50%. And we just need to finish the market to tick off that last objective. So again, what we will do, uh, you can see that it's got 30 out of 50 wood, so it still needs another 20 wood being added. Uh, our lumber yard is uh, going well. Uh, we've got a transporter assigned. We've got our berry collectors assigned, and we've got a stone cutter cut assigned. But again, when you're initially using and you've only got 10 serfs, you do need to keep moving people around buildings. Uh, so again, you click on the down arrow under the uh, on who's employed, and you can just click the X next to one of them, and that will cancel their job. Okay, so building a warehouse is the next thing, and we're also looking to collect resources uh, to unlock the trade route. Now, for that, we need 20 planks, and for that, of course, we need um, the place that actually makes the planks. So we need to unlock some stuff. So we're unlocking the warehouse, fishing, and butchering. So fishing and butchering, which is on the common path in the book. So we've unlocked all three of those, which gives us quite a few new options. Hunting zones. Okay, so hunting zones. You'll see I changed my uh, wood cutting and reforestation. We're actually going to uh, edit that now. So let's get rid of the cutting that wood down. There we go. And then we want to change that to a hunting zone because you can see there's a little uh, image of a boar there. So we know that the guy is going to be able to hunt the boar. And there is also a boar at the top of the map as well. And we will add an extension to the hunting zone uh, a little bit later. Uh, so again, we now need to build a warehouse. And we're going to put that next to our granary because again, it's that lovely red circle around it because no one wants to live next to a warehouse. So you want to build it away from your population center and we want a sawmill. Now the sawmill we'll put down next to the uh, forester's hut. So again, keeping everything nice and close, you can rotate uh, to suit yourself. There we go, that's about right, fits in nicely and build. So it needs 10 stone and 20 wood. Uh, that's fine, we almost have the resources to build it. And we can also build a fisherman's hut, a hunter's hut, and a butchery. Now the hunter's hut is for collecting the boar. The difference now is that you need a butchery to turn the boar into meat, which can then go to the market stall uh, to be sold as a food type. So by getting all of this done straight away, now we're going to put the butchers up at the top here, and again build that, uh, you will have meat, fish, and berries. So three food types right on early in the game. So we're going to put our fisher's hut down here. There we go. And we now have everything that we need for three food types, uh, which will keep that happiness nice and high. So again, I will keep skipping through uh, as the construction is going on. So our sawmill has just finished. We've got one unemployed person. So there we go. Carpenter is now working in there. And we are waiting for more people to join. You'll see our population is now 13 instead of 10. Uh, and again, what we might do is click the down arrow, get rid of, so click on the X. That frees up another employee and we can add to the hunter's hut. So there we go. We now have a hunter as well. And we are waiting for the fisherman's a hut, uh, the warehouse and the butchery to be completed. Your villagers have needs. Yes, they do. That's why they're not very happy at the moment. And the concept of desirability. Well, I've shown that in other episodes, so I'm not really concentrating on it because that mechanic hasn't changed. Uh, but this early game and getting a perfect start has changed significantly. We're moving along very, very fast here. To get all this done in the first hour of playing the game sets you up on a very good footing. Uh, for carrying on into the game and I will continue this series rather than continuing the previous series 
I know it's a bit disappointing for those that have followed on the uh, other seven episodes of the previous series, um, but because of the number of changes, I did think to myself it was worth doing a full-on reboot. So there we go, just expanding the hunting area uh, to ensure that we keep getting our boar. And we got some more people, yay! Okay, that's another three people that we can employ. So again, skip forwards, checking our hunting area because we keep getting the notification that uh, we're out of resources. Uh, so we're shrinking our wood cutting area and what we are doing is we are increasing our hunting area to ensure that we do get that meat, our boar. As you can see, we've got six at the moment, uh, but the butchers hasn't been finished. So we are collecting boar uh, until uh, we are able to butcher them into meat and that is stored in the granary. Again, our market, so we can assign meat now and we need to add a third person. There we go. And again, I will just keep cutting forwards uh, as stuff is going. So you can see that the butchery is now being constructed. Uh, we have one unemployed person uh, that I'm keeping hanging around. Uh, for when this is finished. So this is the last pile of goods, I think. Let's skip forwards again. There we go, it's completed. We can give that person the job so they will start cutting uh, the boars up and turning them into meat, uh, which will go to the market store. Okay, again, skipping forwards, constantly checking. Uh, so hunting, you can see that we do have boar there. So where it's saying no resources, it's now disappeared. That's fine. Uh, so the boar has unfortunately disappeared from the other side. Not too much of a problem. And uh, the other thing I'm not commenting on, uh, and it just happens in this video, is I acquire the piece of land to the left of this plot. Um, so directly on the left hand edge. Okay, so again, market, butchery, everything is there. So now, obviously, we need to progress to the manor house and unlocking our trade routes. So we needed the 20 planks. We are getting there. We now have 21. Come on. Unlock trade route, please. Come on, we've got 23. Update. There we go. Okay, so we've now unlocked trade. Uh, so we can start selling and buying goods. So allow the sale of planks from the trade resources tab. Okay, so go to trade resources, uh, go to our planks, click the sell. So not buy, sell, and then above a set number. And you can either use the arrows or you can type it in. Uh, so again, you want to sell all above. For now, we'll do five. Again, just manipulate that as you feel fit to do as uh, you progress through the game. So again, we've got the board there. It's flashing up saying no resources, but there is, so that again is fine. Moving into, so that's it. We now have to put in our manor house. So here we go, manor house, and you want it at the front, in the center. So on your village square, you want to get it built. So select Great Hall, uh, because that's the only building that you can build at the moment and you want to create it. So I always go with the uh, kind of default layout. I rotate the building, just get it all lined up nice, and then put in a tower and a door, not much else. So again, tower, where do we want it? There, yeah. or do we want it at the back? No, I think on the edge is okay. Again, adjust the height, just left click and drag it to the height that you're happy with. And again, you want the door. So again, where would the door be appropriate? I think probably there. Uh, interactive location, you want to put that at the door and uh, just so it looks right. There we go. Okay, nice. And you can now see a green circle around um, the Great Hall as well. So increasing desirability. So get that done and then build. So it is a great haul, it's definitely right. We need 35 planks, uh, a load of stone and a load of wood. Uh, again, I'll skip forwards till it's completed. So discuss levy with your villagers or promote villagers. Well, we can't really do either at the moment. Uh, we've reached the busy tier, so we've unlocked a low growing book. And we can also now build our church. So we will need to do the church. And we've got uh, the aspirations of a village. So we should all aspire to greatness. 
Uh, this is the uh, setting the village aspiration. Well, we've already done it. So we should all aspire to greatness and it will just automatically complete. And to our prosperity, that's the tutorial part completed. Always worth doing, never do it without the tutorial um, because the way it balances the coins and everything else isn't worth doing. Okay, so King, Kingdom, Prospect Tier, Reach. We've re reached basically Prospect Tier with everything. And again, we have the two things to do. So, confirm mandate and pay upfront cost, if any. Discuss a levy with your villagers. That's for extra coins. Uh, so, I actually decided to go forget it. I've changed my mind. Don't want to ask our little serfs for any extra coins at the moment when we've got 319. Uh, so we're okay, we don't need any extra, it only give us 96 coins anyway, and it would give a big hit to happiness. So let's go no. Again, our uh, village hall is ready, we're following advice. Uh, we can now also build a treasury. Message from the kingdom, yep, yeah, I am but your humble servant, earning influence. Uh, well my best builder will draw you a blueprint well it requires a builder uh, apparently we don't have one uh, that's mainly because we haven't unlocked bridges which is fine let's hire someone on your behalf and that will get that ticked off and it only costs 50 coins so it's fine okay next up of course is going to be the church we're already running it at triple speed so let's slow it down a bit okay and what we want to unlock is wooden bridge might as well uh, but also we want the bailiff's office so that's one that is worth unlocking and of course we've got clothing tavern and uh, bread so farming uh, but we've already got quite a bit uh, so the bailiff's office is worth doing contractual wage edict is another hundred coins uh, we're not going to do that for now under the labor and edict we've got market splendor package uh, well we will need that in the not too distant future uh, and you also have the Labour Splendour package as well. And that only costs 25 coins, so we might as well unlock it, because we're going to need it for one of the quests further down the line anyway, and it gets it ticked off. So again, we want to build our church. So where do we want to build it? I initially thought here to the right-hand side, and then I re-decided with the purchase of the additional land uh, where I wanted to position it. So I was thinking here, um, but what it does is you've got the red area to the right, so we'll destroy that, and what we'll do is we'll expand the um, desirability over to the other side because it's going to be a big residential area. So we want our main building. You, you can keep it fairly simple for the first church, just leave space to expand. Uh, so again, we want to uh, put in the door at the front. We also want a bell tower, of course. Put that on the side, and... oh. No, put it back. There we go, and increase the height. There we go. So 32 stone, 23 planks, eight tools, and 25 wood build. Okay, so now our church is under construction. Now we also have that little question mark, so let's see, meeting the elders. Support is much appreciated. Oh, thank you very much. They're giving us some tools. 10 tools and 10 influence. Okay, again, we will skip forwards. There we go. Okay, so the church is being constructed. We've expanded our residential area, but we need to uh, cancel the area around the church, of course, because uh, we don't want that to be built, but we can expand it around the back of the church, but leaving room for the church itself to actually expand. So there we go. Again, add the additional villagers as they appear under the mandates uh, so promoting villagers so to create a bailiff it needs to be a promoted citizen now you can't use a serf uh, which is a bit of a pain because at the moment we can't actually promote anyone so there's bailiff office but we will as always build it as a separate building because it doesn't need to be part of your manor house so again go to manor house build another one put it on the path over here Mm, yeah, I think here, so down to the bottom, and then it only needs to be fairly simple. So again, select function and bailiff office, and wooden hall, doesn't need to be overly complex. Nice wooden hall, there we go. Whack a tower on it, 
and a door of course so the door will put at the front there we go and then we want to stick a tower on as well or we could just build it tiny actually let's put a chimney on it and build there we go don't even need a tower this time it's just a little mini bailiff's office okay again speed up time you can always go back and edit the buildings and add stuff anyway that's the good thing with this game that no building uh, is fixed when it's one that you can control when, so like manor house okay we've got missing raw materials uh, so we've got 29 meat at the moment sorry 34 oh we've got a courier incoming what does he want Fishermen are thankful for the blueprint, as a bridge is definitely going to bring their community to the forefront. As a thanks, they'd like to trade a fair number of fish for some of your stones. Well, we don't have any stone at the moment, so, so let's use some of our influence. So trade, I just gave you a bridge. Five influence, and that'll give us additional 50 fish. So, yep, lovely stuff. We've now got 159 fish. Oh, we've got another trader coming in. What do they want? Ah, here we go, our market will be splendid. So we need to increase our market splendor uh, to host a grandiose market. Okay, so we now need to edit our market. Let's slow down the game. Now I know that this one up here is the main one, so go to edit building and go with free build. Click on and then click on the whichever ones you want. So I'm gonna put a red market stall on here. I'm gonna put a blue one up at the top and then I'm gonna put in a couple of advertising posts. Cause as you can see, that is plus four Splendor. Uh, so then put a little sign in here. Let's rotate it a bit maybe. Yeah, let's rotate it so it's coming in from that side. That is plus five. Put another one up here. There we go, that'll do. And that is plus six. So 20 wood, 10 planks, few tools, and that will now get built. Okay, we can't mandate a bailiff because uh, we don't have any promoted citizens yet. We need to do the market first. So again, I will skip forwards a bit um, in about a minute or so. Uh, we'll get all of this ticked off. But uh, at favoring an estate, I'm actually gonna continue on my own at this time. So we're not gonna declare that we're going to be favoring any particular estate. We will just work with all three. Uh, because I haven't actually done that yet and it's something that I want to try is keeping every single one of the estates uh, in favour. So clergy, labourers and uh, the kingdom. See if it's possible. Okay, there we go. So we want to uh, promote a villager now. So click to assign a bailiff. None, because it requires commoners or better. So we need to promote a villager uh, to be able to do that. So let's go to open list and it has now unlocked the ability to promote. No, it hasn't. So we can't promote anyone yet. doesn't matter which of these you tick, uh, you will not be able to promote anyone because we haven't reached that part of the game yet. So we're that far ahead uh, the, that you can't do what you need to to move on, uh, but that's fine. So call off promotions. Let's get that bailiff's office constructed. Oh, we've got some more villagers. Let's get them in. And again, what we want to build now is another lumber camp on the extra piece of land that we bought uh, to get some of the wood cut down. So again, an additional lumber camp. And then what we want to do is obviously draw on uh, the extraction zone uh, for this second lumber camp. So just scribble out an area, it doesn't really matter how big it is, you just want a certain area to cut wood, but not all of it because you also want more hunting on this side as well. So you've got two sources of meat coming in uh, to your village. So there we go, that's been done. And for a perfect start, there you go. The bailiff's office is finished, uh, the manor house is done, uh, we have all of the new buildings, we have a church being constructed, that is pretty much your perfect start to 1.9.4.9 for foundation. Thank you very much for watching the video. Again, if you found it helpful, do boot the like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed, then please do so, as it does help my channel greatly. Uh, but until next time, I'll just let this last bit play out for you guys to watch. There's about a minute and a half of footage. Uh, all it leaves me to say, of course, is good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and from me, 
know-it-all gaming, good night.